Now is the time for a real, major, large-scale preventive inspection and treatment of the red vineyards. Our conservators are ready to get started on this work and make new discoveries. These include the circumstances under which the painting was created and the techniques Vincent van Gogh employed in creating it. What the painting has endured in Europe and our country over more than a century of its history. What helped this painting to survive to this day in such an amazing condition. The Red Vignettes in Arles was painted in November 1888 in Arles. The Arles period is considered the most prolific in Vincent van Gogh's over. As one of the central works in the Gallery of European and American Art of the 19th and 20th centuries, the Red Vignettes has only once left the museum. And now that the majority of works once owned by the Morozov brothers have left for an exhibition at the Louis Vuitton Foundation, we have an opportunity to study this painting in detail and answer some questions about its history and fate. Vincent van Gogh's letters indicate that on his arrival in Arles at the end of October 1888, Paul Gauguin purchased 20 meters of solid jute canvas, which they divided equally. Having cut the pieces to size, Van Gogh and Gauguin stretched, glued and primed the canvases themselves. This preparation took several days, as the applied layers had to be allowed to dry. To conduct comprehensive research and perform the necessary conservation treatments, the canvas was moved to the painting's conservation workshop of the museum. Given the extremely fragile state of the piece, an anti-vibration climate chamber was used to move it from the gallery to the main building of the museum. At the first stage of the work, the museum's conservators removed the canvas from its frame and carefully inspected and dusted its front and back sides. The canvas was x-rayed in the museum's radiographic laboratory. And here we have our first discovery. A careful study of the x-ray showed that the painting was stretched on the stretcher twice. The first time was when Vincent van Gogh painted it in Arles, and the second time Theo van Gogh restretched it in Paris on a new, slightly larger stretcher. It's visible in the radiograph, but the pattern of the original stretched canvas is not the same as the current one. When the painting was restretched, the thick paint layer crept along its perimeter. In the next step, the conservators selected fragments of threads from the canvas. A series of studies was conducted at the Department of Higher Plants, Faculty of Biology of the Moscow State University to identify the nature of the origin of the threads and the fibers. At the first stage, a light microscope was used to ascertain that the sample consisted of uniform, finer fibers. These thin fibers were then separated from each other for further study. The fibers can be seen to have smooth, fairly thick walls. The end is very elongated, gradually narrowing, pointed. The cavity is clearly visible. The cavity is wide enough along its length, but there are some areas where it narrows quite dramatically and almost disappears. These signs, smooth thick walls, a cavity which is significantly narrowed in certain areas, in addition to a distinct lignification reaction, which we saw and found out that there is lignin, and relatively lot of it, all these signs indicate that the fibre in question is the fibre of such plant as jute. One type of study was of cross-sections of the fibers. For this purpose, the fibers were encapsulated in a special solidifying chemical resin after being treated with several reagents. From the prepared block with sealed fibers inside, cross-sections of 5 to 10 micrometers in thickness were made using a microtome. 
The slices were mounted on a slide and then embedded in chemical resin. Comparative analysis of morphological features with reference specimens from the Department of Higher Plants confirmed that the studied specimen had a fibre structure typical of jute. Simultaneously with the study of morphological features, an assessment of the degree of damage to the fibres of the yarn was made. The investigations were conducted in transmitted and reflected light at a 200 to 1000 times range of magnification. The microscopic analysis of the changes in the morphological and crystal optical characteristics of the fibres indicates that the degree of fibre deterioration is insignificant.